On the racetrack, speed is everything, but so is safety. That's why full gear isn't just recommended, it's mandatory. An approved helmet, gauntlet gloves, race leathers, and proper boots all work together to protect you when pushing the limits. But let's be real, racing is dangerous. No matter how good your gear is, the risks are always there. So how do you mitigate those risks? How do you give yourself the absolute best chance to walk away when things go wrong? What if there was something that could take your safety to the next level? Check. All right, so if you watched the last video, I bought a track bike, which led me down a rabbit hole of trying to figure out what's the best thing that I could do to make sure I maintain safety on the track, which led me to airbag suits, which was the answer to the question that I asked previously. So it ended up being a pretty fascinating uh, adventure finding out all about these suits. And actually I started to look into it and I got fascinated by the history of it. So today we're diving into the history of, of the full leather racing suit and airbag suits. Where did this awesome technology come from? What led to it and how is it possible that me and you can afford these things today? Let's get into it. The idea for an airbag for a motorcycle dates all the way back to the mid 70s and 80s. Honda first toyed with airbag systems for motorcycles, but these were focused on the bikes themselves, not the riders. The challenge? Unlike cars, motorcyclists are ejected in crashes, making traditional airbags impractical. But a few people had the right idea as far back as 1976, when Tomas Straub registered the first motorcycle airbag patent, seen here. Fast forward to the early 2000s, and we see the first serious attempts at integrating airbags into racing motors. Companies like Dionysi and Alpine Stars began testing airbag equipped suits with sensors to detect crashes in milliseconds. Oh, 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 oh. I've seen these airbags. Ah, now that is the new Dionysi D Air. Dropski this morning. And also Simoncelli yesterday. Simoncelli was the first bloke wow. to use it. I'm impressed with that a lot. Wow. These suits were expensive and at the time exclusive to MotoGP riders, acting as a hidden layer of protection in high speed crashes. By the 2010s, the airbag technology had matured. Matured enough that MotoGP decided to make it mandatory in 2018. Proving their effectiveness in reducing injuries, this era saw rapid advancements, lighter, more comfortable designs, and faster inflation times. Privateer racers started taking notice, and demand for consumer-level airbag systems skyrocketed. Today, airbag technology is no longer reserved for the pros. Companies like Dionysi, Alpine Stars, RST, and even new brands offer airbag-equipped suits for amateur racers and track day riders alike. With self-contained wireless systems with GPS and accelerometers, these days there is no need for a tethered deployment. And with some suits offering the ability to recharge and reuse the system after an inflation, it's never been easier or safer to hit the racetrack. All right, so before we get into my airbag suit that I did buy, doing this, I actually kind of went down a whole rabbit hole of motorcycle gear in general and how we got from like the first gear all the way up to airbag suits. So I made a little montage. I hope you dig it. Check it out. Back in the early days, riders wore everyday clothes with full length boots being their only real protection. Early motorcycle racers took inspiration from airline pilots adopting leather jackets, boots, gauntlet gloves, and goggles. The first mandatory helmets made of canvas and shellac were introduced at the 1914 Isle of Man TT and soon spread across the world. By the 1920s, leather jackets, pants, and cork shell helmets became standard for riders. Then in the 1950s, racing legend Geoff Duke introduced the first one-piece racing leather suit, improving aerodynamics, durability, and safety while being on the track. The 1970s brought composite padding that was placed under the leather, offering even more protection to the riders. The pads combined a rigid outer shell with a soft inner layer for huge improvements in impact protection. As riders developed more skill and these suits provided more safety, the lean angles of the motorcycles increased. So early knee sliders were needed. Many of these early knee sliders were DIY, using duct tape, plastic melt cartons, and pretty much anything that could slide on the pavement. Originally designed for aerodynamics, the speed hump on the rider's back soon evolved, at first providing storage for hydration systems, then data logging, and eventually holding the electronics for the airbag systems. The first patent for a motorcycle airbag was filed in 1976, as we discussed earlier. 
Then in 1998, the first commercial airbag vest, the HIT air vest, hit the market using a tethered activation system. As it was new to the market, it was not highly adapted, but those who used it swore by it. Finally, MotoGP revolutionized safety with sensor-based airbag suits. These deploy in milliseconds using accelerometers, gyroscopes, and GPS to protect riders in high-speed crashes. Through their research and development, these eventually made it down to track days and also commuters. So thank you, MotoGP, for helping make motorcycling safe around the world. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I had fun making it. So what suit did I get? I got, let me read it because I never get it right. It is the RST Pro Series Evo Airbag CE One Piece Leather Racing Suit. And I got it from Sport Bike Track Gear. They seem like they're a very reputable company and they all the people that work there race, so I don't think they'd do anything to hurt the community because they are a part of it. So anyways, I got this suit. It's about 1200 bucks. It comes with everything you need. It comes with the in-in box, which is, uh, what do they call it? The in-motion controller. So this little box here is what actually uh, you insert into the back uh, protector, which has the airbag system in it. And that's what it, um, pops the whole suit. The airbag is built into the suit, so there's nothing to put on the outside. There's nothing to fit in. It's just like a normal set of leathers. When you get in, you squeeze them in and uh it's ready to go and the cool part is is it has an app so the app once you once you plug the battery in in this unit and in, into the back plate you kind of log in with the app and it does a system check so before you'd ever go out on the track you know that your system is functioning properly so i thought that was really really cool the overall build of the suit too i have a set of leathers and they're okay i felt pretty safe in them but after getting this the arm pockets the knee pockets are way tighter there's a um, besides the actual armor and stuff there's like another almost plastic pocket that kind of holds your arm in place it just makes it feel like that whole thing is really going to be there if you do hit the ground it's not going to slide out of the way then you add in the whole fact that it has a built-in airbag and i'm pretty happy with the suit so the reviews that I've seen online have been pretty good. I'd say up around the 80%, 85% positive. I've seen a few that were negative, but it did seem like the guys were kind of, in my eyes, were posting user error issues kind of thing, or they happened to roll a certain way, or maybe the suit didn't fit quite right and like it wasn't sliding on the leather. But then you'd see 20 other guys say, hey man, this is my fourth time down in the suit and it's been great. So I feel pretty confident in my purchase. Um, there's a lot to learn about the system. Um, it is just like any new and modern type thing. Um, it has a subscription. So uh, getting into it, I wasn't super stoked about that. I'm not sure I like subscription based services, but looking at what everything else would cost, like the Alpina Star stuff is that's 12 or 1300 bucks just for the airbag system. And then you're spending another $2,500 on the suit. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure you get what you pay for and I'm not dogging that in any way. I just don't have that in my budget. So I had to work with what I had available. So I'll, I'll report back. I've had the suit on. I didn't think you guys wanted to see me model in it, so I didn't put it on. But uh, I've had the suit on. It's very comfortable. It's tight where it needs to be, but it gives you a little room where it doesn't need to be. And I'm looking forward to hopefully staying safe with it on the track. So this one, I don't think it's too dumb and I really hope it works. But Hey, if you had fun today, man, throw me a like and throw a subscribe down there. We get a video up once a week, if not more than that. Pretty much anything to do with two wheels, racing, touring, adventure riding, rebuilding vintage bikes, fixing Harleys, doing whatever. We do all kinds of stuff. Just, uh, when you get a chance, come on back. All right. Well, if it works, it ain't dumb. We'll see you on the next one. Uh -huh.